to this new Motosport talk series with Motosport Engineer. Motosport Engineer is a platform for engineers and professionals who want to learn directly from the best industry professionals. We do this by publishing our own uh, online courses and running webinars with the relevant suppliers in the industry. Today, we've got Martin Bukan, a neurodynamics design engineer with experience in Formula One. How are you, Martin? Yeah, pretty good. Thank you, Jared. We're very happy to have you. Um, there's a lot Thank of you. questions that we would like to um, ask you and understand mm -hmm. your background, your studies, your professional experience. But maybe before we dive deeper into the specifics of all this, of your CV, um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are you and, and where do you come from? What are your origins? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Martin Bakken. I'm from Berlin, Germany. Uh, I'm from a very technical interested family so my mother used to drive motorcycle my father used to be a pilot so I was always surrounded by interesting technology and myself I was karting and um, yeah so um, I was always into technology and always liked to work on different kinds of vehicles. Mm -hmm. Very good is, is there a big uh, automotive tradition in Berlin because as far as I know Berlin is not like the the part of Germany where there's like the stronger passion for cars it might be more like uh, munich stuttgart and yeah, so on yeah exactly yeah yeah so if you want to get into car industry you either have to go to wolfsburg in the center or you have to go to the south the whole action is in the south so i was always prepared to move to the south <laughs> and uh yeah so i always knew that was gonna happen uh pretty soon so you had the passion from a very young age and you always knew that you wanted to work uh, in this field yeah exactly yeah so i I always wanted to be the one who is designing cars. And at the beginning, when I was in primary school, I thought that's the car dealer. So I wanted to become a car dealer because I thought he is building the cars and then selling it. But <laughs> later, when I realized that actually there are engineers in the background, I wanted to become an engineer. So from a very young age, I could already focus on becoming an engineer. So focused on math and physics. And uh, yeah, I was working on RC models and on motorcycles from 12 or 13 years old. So. That was always interesting to me. Good. And were you specifically interested in racing or just um, cars and bikes in general? Uh, in interesting constructions. And the most interesting constructions are usually in motorsports. So I was interested in that. I was also interested in, uh, in aerodynamics. So um, I always liked the idea of having this invisible force and mm -hmm. um, learn more about this. So I would put my scale models on my mother's kitchen scale and then just use a hair dryer to simulate the aerodynamics and measure the downforce and things like this and yeah so i always wanted to know, know more about this excellent um so maybe let's talk a little bit about your um education um so mm -hmm. be, beyond secondary school and so on more would, would be university i mm -hmm. think you you followed the very kind of specific case for Germany, um, quite exclusive as well. So um, yeah, it would be great if you could uh, talk us through what you did specifically. So during my study, so after school, um, it was always clear to me that I want to become part of the junior engineer program of one of the big car manufacturers. So in Germany, the car manufacturers offer that at their headquarters. And um, specifically, I like the Audi program because it used to be a five-year program where mm -hmm. you can become a... Um, professional car mechanic and you can study automotive engineering uh, usually in germany if you do that uh, after each other it would take seven years and within this program it took five years and since i was already quite exposed to technology and i worked on cars myself be before i finished school i wasn't really sure if i should uh, become a professional car mechanic or if i should uh, study engineering so this program was combining both for me which was perfect so I could, um, I could just be in the workshop and then the following week I would be in university. So that was perfect for me. And at the same time, I also got paid during this time. And um, we had the guarantee to stay at Audi afterwards. Mm, that's interesting. And so tell us a little bit about the entry requirements, because um, at least I had never heard of anything like this before. I didn't know that this existed in Germany. Um, mm -hmm. So for any anybody that is listening who might be from Germany or, or elsewhere, yeah, it would be great if you could share with us your experience with, uh, you know, the application, um, maybe there was an interview process and so on. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yes, of course. Um, so there is an interview process and um, there are different stages. So for example, at first you, you have, a, um, I think I had a telephone interview 
and then you're invited for the first interview and um, if you pass this you're invited for a second interview and in the end you you are chosen or you're not chosen um, they're quite selective for these uh, programs so we had more than 1000 applicants and they only take 20 every year wow and what helped me a lot was my previous experience because um, there was a time when my father couldn't answer my technical questions anymore and um, he said to me just go around to the next uh, local workshop and just uh, ask them all the questions you want, work there for free. And this is exactly what I did from a very young age. So I think I was 15 when I just went to this local car workshop and they had all kinds of brands. So we worked from small cars up to bigger Bentleys with everything and I could like get a lot of experience. And that was during my school time. So like two or three days uh, after school, I would just go to this workshop and uh, work with them. And I used my summer holidays and autumn holidays to work in other companies like BMW, Porsche, VW. And all of this happened before I finished school. So with all these references, I could then go to Audi and apply. And of course, you need a good A-level. But additionally, with these references, uh, I had better chances of getting into that program. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I got accepted. And it was uh, a very nice time for five years. I can imagine. So basically, from a very young age, you kind of were already very passionate about that specific field and, mm -hmm. and you kind of in your mind it was very clear that you wanted to to work in this field so yes. you were you were trying to gain experience from very early on and this was mm -hmm. basically the factor that was key for them being accepted to Audi in this program yes exactly yeah they said they've never seen so much experience before and it would fit perfectly into their program so that was uh, the main reason why they took me Excellent. And what's the age range um, of the typical applicant or, or, or the age range that they accept um, people in the program? Uh, I think it's from 18 and, uh, to 21. This is usually the age of the applicants, but mm -hmm. there's no upper age level. But usually these are graduates or, or mm -hmm. these are uh, um, people who just finished school. Mm -hmm. Very good. And I presume they are still doing this um, currently, right? So it's something they do yes. on a yearly basis. Yeah, the, the program always changes slightly from year to year, but the main program is still there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's in partnership with a university, I believe. Um, yes. So, so there's the, yeah. the practical side that must be done at the facility of the company, but then the educational yeah. side of things is done with the, with the university. Um, yes. Is, is there something you can choose there? Um, can you choose a university or they only have one partnership with a single university? Uh, it's only this one partnership with uh, a university in Ingolstadt, which is specialized on car industry. So you have students for BMW and for Audi there, and all the courses at the university are specialized to the needs of the car companies. So if you want to get into car companies, it's always good to go to such a university, which has a lot of partnerships with car companies, because you will learn exactly what you need to know to get a job there. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, so since Audi accepted me for this program, it was clear that I will go to this university. And uh, it's it's a very good university with uh, very good facilities. It's a bit smaller, so it's a bit um, more like a bigger family. It's a bit still like school. Uh, it's not a, a huge university, and it was great for me. It was especially uh, so it was exactly what I wanted mm -hmm. for my for my study. Excellent. And yeah, couldn't have been better. No, that's excellent. So I'm a little bit interested on the dynamics of the program itself once you were in it. Um, because of course, like I studied at university like as a, as a regular student, as, mm -hmm. as I guess most of the people out there in which you, you go over your academic year from let's say September, October until May, June or May, whatever it may be, yeah. it, it really changes country to country. Um, yeah. And then you've got your summer break, right? So um, yeah. how, how was it for you for this program? So in this program, you're required to go to the factory whenever you have a holiday. So the summer holidays, you would always spend in the Audi factory. But the good thing is, um, so you always have to do this internship. But the good thing is that uh, you can always choose where you go to. So for example, if you're interested in tire development, you can go to the tire department, tire department of the road cars, then you can go to the tire department of Audi Sport, then you can go to the tire department of Lamborghini. You can focus on this one topic if you want, but you can also go to a lot of different areas. And this is what I did. So I did. Uh, I went into production. I went into quality management. 
and I went to all kinds of different departments within the technical development. So I went into drivetrain development, mm -hmm. brake development, uh, suspension pre-development. So where they where they design the basic um, geometry for the suspension, but also the uh, geometry testing department. These are the prototypes you always see on the Nurburgring. And I also went to the aerodynamics and cooling department. And so I, I just wanted to see the whole company and how everything works uh, to understand all the different areas of the car. But um, you, can, you can design your own path. So this is really great there. And it's never a problem to get into these departments because you're already internally working for Audi. You're officially an Audi employee, even though you're a student. And um, you're always, um, they, they never have to pay you. So it's always easy to get into these departments um, because you're always paid by, by another department, by this uh, education department. So it's right. always very easy to get to whatever department you want to go. Right, I see. So you said that you, you worked for the company during your kind of university breaks. That mm -hmm. means that you, like in, in, in a year, how many kind of different jobs could you have uh, with like three positions or you see what I mean? Like in, in yeah. big breaks, how many yes. a year would you have? So you would do like one internship um, during the winter break. So just after your exams, um, you would do a longer internship during the summer. And then you would do um, maybe another small internship in autumn. Mm -hmm. So up to three jobs, yes, but this is completely up to you. You can also always go to the same department. And also a part of this, um, of this program is that you write your, your final thesis at Audi. And right. you also, so in, in this study, there's one practical semester. So you also have to spend your practical semester at Audi and you can always choose wherever you want to go. And the nice thing is that Audi is part of the VW group. So you can also do it somewhere else in the group. So you can also go to VW to Bentley, to Lamborghini, you have a lot of possibilities. And that's also one of the reasons why I wanted to get into Audi because uh, this VW group is doing everything from motorcycles to trucks and has a lot of interesting motorsport programs. So you have a big variety of areas you can go to. That's very interesting. And you said you, you were with Lamborghini as well. I presume that was in Italy. Um, that was in Ingolstadt, but we were working for Lamborghini. There, right. we, had some, we had some smaller projects with Lamborghini where they would send us cars. We would do a couple of projects on these cars and we would send them back. We would prepare the cars for them. Uh, sometimes we only have facilities in Ingolstadt that they don't have in Italy. And then we would do it for them and send it back. Okay, that's very interesting. And uh, what, what was the area you um, enjoyed the most? Because, yeah, I mean, you were interested in seeing as, as many areas as possible. Um, yeah. But there were like... Were there one or two or three that you said, I really want to work in this field? Um, so I was very interested in suspension. So suspension pre-development and then also uh, testing the cars, like um, getting the suspension setup uh, done on the racetrack, but also on, on other test tracks. That was very interesting. If you're working on the, on the first idea and then you drive the car later and you can do all the changes, you can also work in the workshop, change wishbones and stuff. So this is really, really cool. Um, but um, my favorite was aerodynamics. So um, again, this invisible force and working in a wind tunnel and working with different cars. Another component to that was the cooling department because a lot of people know about aerodynamics, but then because of the job that this department was doing, I also got more and more into cooling. And uh, the combination of aerodynamics and cooling is, is something that not a lot of people know about. And I was very interested in that. And um, this is where a lot of potential for cars lies, especially with the upcoming electric cars. Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting field. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, no, like there's a lot of components in, in the electric vehicle that, that yeah. run at high temperatures and need to be cooled down. So that's yeah. absolutely a growing field and a very interesting field. Were you involved in any racing activities? Um, so like I said, I was karting um, myself before I moved to the south of Germany. Um, and then when I joined university, I was immediately asking them if they have a Formula student team, which they didn't at the time, but they said to me, they are just about to found one. So I just immediately contacted the students who were involved in this. And I was one of the first members of the team. And um, in our first season in Formula Student Electric, uh, we could even reach the eighth overall position worldwide. So it was quite successful. Wow. 
and um, I was one of the drivers and I was responsible for vehicle dynamics and I was also one of the mechanics so working on all kinds of things around the car um, like laminating the bodywork and uh, assembling the car and yeah so a lot of interesting experiences there also uh, this topic about vehicle dynamics was new to me I knew about suspension but not about vehicle dynamic simulation so much so mm -hmm. we had two electric motors on the rear axle independent from each other so we could uh, work with torque vectoring so I got into this topic because I was a driver I could also experience exactly what I'm doing so if, if something doesn't feel right I can change the code and then drive again so that was very good experience and in the second season I was responsible for aerodynamics and bodywork so we would have our first aero package on the car with DRS with uh, with the unsprung uh, rear wing which have some weird movements and um, with automatic DRS so there was a, a code behind it and um, we would laminate all the parts ourselves and that was a very interesting experience and yeah I really enjoyed that pretty much we were traveling uh, through Europe to different races with the car and it was a very stressy but also very interesting time I learned a lot absolutely I can imagine how long were you involved in the in the team it was two and a half years. Two and a half years. Uh -huh. Yeah, so two full seasons plus the preparation time after we founded the, the team. And um, that was uh, a very interesting experience, was very nice. Um, a lot of um, interesting connections made as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, and what tools um, did you use while, while at the team um, to develop, like to work on the vehicle dynamics? Um, and with the aerodynamics uh, kind of simulations that you were doing as well and working on the aero package, what software tools were you using? Um, so we were using OpenFoam. Um, of course, it's, it's for free. So most of the teams are working with that. Um, but you also have to do more yourself. We were working with MATLAB Simulink to simulate the vehicle dynamics. And we were also working with CarMaker to simulate the whole vehicle and to simulate lap times. And um, these were the main tools that we were using. Mm -hmm. for this. So this kind of follows the line that, that you started at a very young age, right? While, mm -hmm. while at school, you were trying to yeah. gain experience and exposure to, to um, like the leading softwares and tools to develop cars and racing cars from a very yeah. young age. Um, yeah. Would you recommend getting involved in Formula Student? Yeah, definitely, because it's exactly what, um, what race teams need. And this is exactly what's, what's also required in bigger car manufacturers. The processes are exactly the same. Sometimes the level in Formula Student is even higher than it is in, in other racing categories. And uh, it's definitely always a good reference. Everyone is looking for a Formula Student reference. And people know that if people have been successful in Formula Student, they are good candidates for a certain job. Mm -hmm. And But why is it, why is it that companies like people who have been at Formula Student teams so much, what, what is special about them? Because you have one common goal and you need to work through it. You need to work to very tight timelines. Sometimes you would sleep in university or just work through the night uh, just to reach that last deadline to get the car to the track. And then the car is still only 95% finished and you need to think about how can I get the last 5% done so the car can, can last for the endurance run. And um, yeah, you just have to improvise and you just have to get it done. And this is what a lot of companies require. Mm -hmm. Just and work to the deadline. Yeah, and, and, and also just a reminder, right, that's while studying an engineering degree, which is not easy mm -hmm. on its own, right? That's, that yeah. can be fairly challenging. Um, yeah. So the fact that you're involved in formerly a student, that adds up um, a lot more pressure to your, to your life. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's, that's very interesting. Then tell us a little bit about your, your dissertation um, from university. Uh, what was the topic of it? And um, yeah, tell us a little bit about it. So my first dissertation when I was at Audi, so for my bachelor, uh, was basically about aerodynamics and cooling. So I was in this aerodynamics and cooling department. I worked there before. And while I was working there, I organized my, my thesis. And uh, it was basically about um, you have always have a certain flow pattern in the front of the car, which is always the same. And it only changes a little bit for different car categories. Like if I have an SUV like an Audi Q7 and then I have a, a lower car like an Audi A6, the flow pattern is always roughly the same. 
And uh, this department always has questions like, what happens if I put a smaller radiator inside? Or what is what if I reduce the size of the air intakes? How will it affect my cooling? So I developed a tool with uh, aerodynamic simulations and then with statistics, which would be basically a statistical analysis. So it would be one big massive code and people could just input um, all the numbers, all the dimensions, and you would get the airflow through the radiators without having to do all the simulations. So you only do one set of um, simulation once, and then you have your whole structure, you have your, your data cloud, and from this you can then get the information without having to do uh, simulations every time, so which saves a lot of resources mm -hmm. and is a much faster way. So, for example, if you want to know what a smaller radiator does, then you don't need to do a simulation, which takes one or two days. Um, you can just go into this tool and have the answer within 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so not, not using as much computing power, which means you can get the results much faster. Yeah. Very good. And I, I presume that was done with MATLAB and Simulink as well. Yes, yeah. MATLAB and Simulink and OpenFoam. And OpenFoam. Very good. Yeah. Excellent. Exactly. So this, I think this summarizes your, your university studies, which sound very um, exciting and challenging at the same time for what you were doing with Audi. But then what, what happened when you finished university? I think you said that you were obliged to do two years of, of work with, with Audi. That was the mm -hmm. case, I presume, for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, let's start a little bit earlier. When I finished the Formula student team, um, I had an internship in the brake department at Audi and mm -hmm. one of my colleagues there had a race team and on my first day I introduced myself and hold a little presentation to introduce myself to the team and after the presentation he came to me and asked me if, if I want to become a member in his team or if I would like to have a look and that was a VLN endurance racing team which was doing four and six hour races and then once per year the 24 hour race on the Nürburgring and they would race with the Audi RS4 and Audi RS5. And uh, they had massive aerodynamic and cooling issues at the time. So it was perfect for me, for my, special, my specialty. And I went to them and joined this team. And this is the uh, activity that I did also after the study. So when I finished my study, I started working in the aerodynamics and cooling department at Audi. And I was responsible for electric and hydrogen and hybrid cars. And in my free time, I was a member in that team. So everything that I wanted to try at work, but maybe couldn't, I could try in this team. And um, that was a very interesting time as well. And at the same time, when I started working, after I finished my, my study of automotive engineering, I studied aeronautical engineering just for my own interest. And I yeah, just learned a lot there about aeroplane control and aerodynamics again. And you said that was while you were working already. Yes. Yeah. Same so, time. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was working um, as an engineer in the technical development at Audi. Uh, parallel to that, I was studying aeronautical engineering, and in my free time, I was with the team. You still had free time. Uh, yeah, that was the team. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so, and and how how did it work? So you studied uh, at night um, or in the evenings. Um, how how does it work? Is it special kind of master's degree that doesn't run the classes or the lectures during the day? I presume. So the the lectures were during the day, and the good thing was that as an engineer within Audi, you have quite flexible working times. So I could attend lectures in the morning and then work later in the evening. Mm -hmm. So that worked very well. And that was the reason why I was able to, to attend lectures. I see. And was this sponsored yeah. by Audi as well? Or was there any relationship with, with the fact that you're working at Audi? Uh, no, there was no, no relationship. There was only my own interest and that was only my own little project. <laughs> uh -huh. Very good. Yeah. And, and um, tell us like, a little bit about VLN, because I think not everybody knows about VLN, the VLN Championship. But my mm. understanding is it's extremely popular in Germany and mm -hmm. also very challenging and competitive. Yeah, exactly. So um, the 24-hour race at the Nürburgring is the most famous race for VLN. Um, it's the Endurance Racing Championship in Germany with touring cars. So these are basically stock vehicles. And the great thing is the big variety of cars. So you have up to 200 different cars on the 24 hour race. And um, these are very different cars. So you can have like a small Citroen AX and you have a Mercedes SLS at the same time on the track. 
Mm -hmm. And um, so professional GT3 teams are there, but also very low budget teams who run a very simple car, older car. And maybe the team only consists of six people, like four drivers and then two additional mechanics. So it's, it's very great to see all these um, interesting teams there. And if you imagine when Formula One is at Nürburgring, uh, one team has two garages, so one garage for each car. But during the 24-hour race, every garage has six teams inside. Wow. So it's super crowded and a big variety, and it's just always great to watch. Mm -hmm. I can imagine there's so many people there watching, not so many spectators as well. That'd be very, very um, yeah. unique, unique experience. Yeah. Um, right. So then you work for Audi for uh, a bit more than two years. And um, years, yeah. yeah, with the aero and coding um, kind of yeah. tasks that you mentioned. And then what, what happens after that? So um, when it became apparent that I can, that I will finish this program and I will uh, be the engineer in this aerodynamics department, which was always my, my target, my lifetime target to be in a big German car manufacturer, to be there in the technical development at aerodynamics. So I, I achieved all of that as my first job after study, I said, um, I have to have a higher goal than that. So what is the highest possible goal that I can set myself in car engineering? And I thought Formula One would be the highest. So Formula One aerodynamics, let's focus on that. So from that point onwards, I was uh, focusing on this and I was thinking, what's the best way of getting into Formula One? Of course, I can just apply for a job that becomes available online. But also I wanted to study motorsport in the UK. That was not possible in Germany at the time. And I always liked the idea of study for myself um, because during the program at Audi, it was great being paid and study for Audi, but you always, um, you always have certain, um, you always work in a certain frame. Yeah. So um, I wanted to um, study on my own for one year and the master in the UK is quite fast. In Germany, it would take two years, but in the UK, it would only take one year. So I said, okay, let's go back to university and let's study um, advanced motorsport engineering and crane field. But I also applied for um, Oxford Brooks, the motorsport degree, and uh, for motorsport aerodynamics in Southampton. I got offers from all three of them, but crane field worked for me best because of mm -hmm. personal reasons. And uh, that was that was the best choice for me. Mm -hmm. Very good. And uh, may I ask how old were you when, when you enrolled at Cranfield? Uh, I was 27. 27, okay. Mm -hmm. um, some people are a bit um, reluctant of going back to university mm -hmm. once they've been working for some years. Um, yeah. like, was, was, this, was this a problem for you at all? Um, what would be your recommendation to people who are hesitant that they should maybe quit their job to study for one or two years. Um, would you recommend doing such thing? In terms of financial, um, from a financial point of view, it didn't make a lot of sense because I was earning quite well as an Audi engineer and all my colleagues said, are you crazy? Why are you doing this? Because I go to the UK, I don't earn anything. Uh, additionally, I pay a lot to do this course. Um, but for me, it was worth it because I wanted to, to learn a lot of different things that I didn't learn before and which was true later. So I could gain a lot of experience and, um, and also the, the job that I could do afterwards was just worth it. Mm -hmm. So um, that was very good. At the time I was already married and had a child, so I, I could still manage to do this somehow. So I quit my job and of course, financially it wasn't easy, but it was working. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And um, what was your experience at Cranfield? What did you think about the course? Um, what was the dynamics as well? What were the, the modules that you were taking? Uh, so the Cranfield study was um, very different from the study that I experienced in Germany because you always had uh, one course for one week very intensively. So you, you start from scratch on Monday and on Friday you would be an expert in that field. And then the following week you would have free time to prepare your, your homework or your, your project work, your assignment for this mm -hmm. module. Um, and this is how you work through the year. And that was very interesting. And uh, you could find exactly the module that you are interested in, which in my case was then aerodynamics and um, also CFD. But also we learned a lot about suspension and tires. And uh, the approach in motorsport is sometimes a bit different than in road car engineering. So I learned a lot of new things there. And also when I was working at Audi, I was part of a manufacturer. So if you need to fix something, you always have the specialized tools for it. 
you always have access to everything. In Cranefield, it was the other way around. We wanted to work on certain cars and we don't have any tools. So we need to think about how can we still do the same engineering job on him? How can I measure the steering angle without having access to the steering angle and stuff like this? Mm -hmm. and uh, how to read data and stuff. So that was very good. We also had a lot of project work afterwards. So we would, we would work in small teams and we would prepare, we would design a hill climb car, for example. And um, we would also talk to industry professionals about it. And it was a great year and it was a great um, experience. Mm -hmm. And also the biggest advantage of Cranefield is that they have such a strong connection to, um, to the industry. So for example, the course in, in Cranefield has a steering committee and these are 10 to 15 people, industry leaders. So from all the bigger Formula One teams and they are sitting together once per month or once every two months and they're discussing what would make sense to teach the students so what would be valuable for them so after you've done the cranefield course you know exactly what the teams will need or you are perfectly prepared and the teams know that if you're coming from cranefield from this course you're perfectly prepared to whatever they need and that was another big help so it was similar to the program at audi that i did i was perfectly prepared for the german car industry but um the Cranefield course was perfect for the British motorsport industry. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So then I presume you had a lot of presentations from Formula One teams, lots of like, yeah. you know, speakers coming and, yeah, exactly. and giving like, guest lectures. Yeah, exactly. So you, you have uh, nearly all of the teams coming in to present themselves to you and to present different job opportunities. And also you have a strong community with alumni, with previous students who are working in different motorsport categories. So whenever you want to apply for a certain job, you can always ask your professors if there's a previous student who's already working there. So you can contact them, you have the connection. So this whole network is very powerful. And that's the biggest advantage to the previous situation that I'm applying by myself from Germany for a job there. It's, it's hard to get in, but once you're in such a course and you have this whole network, this whole connections, it's easier to mm -hmm. get in. You already know somebody there. And also if you start a job there, you already know somebody. So you have a different relationship to people than you just uh, get to know them on your first day. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And um, what was the, the dissertation about? Uh, for this course, my dissertation was at McLaren. And again, the previous experience at Audi was uh, a big help there because um, I didn't just know about aerodynamics, I also knew about cooling. And then at McLaren, I worked on the upcoming uh, Formula E battery cooling. So McLaren was developing the Formula E battery at the time. And um, I was trying to optimize the cooling system there. Um, so my previous experience, again, was helping me to, to get into there. If I would have been just the aerodynamicist, then it would have been hard. But uh, with this very specialized cooling um, battery cooling knowledge that I had from from Audi, I could um, get into this role. Mm -hmm. And in your experience, is it common to do a dissertation with, with a company? It's, it's pretty hard to get in. And right. I think I, I was the only one who was paid for the master thesis of my course, but it's not impossible. So if you if you find the right project, and the thing is that you shouldn't look out for the project that you want to do you should present your favorite topic to the companies and make it attractive for them so um, we, we learned a lot of these very direct approaches at Cranefield where um, our professors for example would say just um, just create an attractive package to the manufacturer or to the company go to them present it to them and if they like it then you can do it there Mm -hmm. Or, for example, our professors also said uh, the year has 52 weeks, so we want to see you 52 weekends at the racetrack. We had free access to Silverstone at every weekend, so we want you guys to use that. And um, if you're a member of the course, you get crane for your jackets, you get, um, you should, they, they tell you to make yourself some business cards and some small A5 CVs. And then uh, go to the track, talk to the people in every kind of motorsport category give them your CV and just get in touch and, and uh, create your own brand, basically. Mm -hmm. That's great. So it's important of personal branding now and, and, yeah. and also emphasizing on the fact that you are the owner of your own future. So make sure you make the most out yeah. of it. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Right. So then you finished, you graduated from Cranfield. Um, yeah. What happened next? So um, obviously I wanted to get into Formula One like 
a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I was applying for different jobs within Formula One from my beginning of my master course. So, um, but the problem was that, uh, first of all, the, the German application is very different from a British application. So I had to learn how to write a proper British application. But the, uh, there's a certain department for this at Cranfield University, which could help me a lot. And um, in the end, I had my, my um, application documents sorted and I got invitations for the teams. But then my problem was that I got rejected. And I think um, I visited a lot of different Formula One teams and Force India, for example, I applied there four times and I think three times I got rejected, but you just have to stay on it and just try again, try again, learn from your mistakes. And in the end, I got invited and it was already close to the end of my master thesis. So just before I finished the course and um, then everything went pretty quickly. The interview was, was great. And it was on the first day afternoon on first day evening, they already told me that I would get the job. Wow. And on a Friday morning, they sent me the official offer. So very that good. was very quick suddenly. And uh, Force India was also exactly the team I wanted to go to because um, coming from a big company like Audi, I wanted to go to a smaller organization, smaller organization, so less people, more responsibility. And also I liked the idea of, um, of working to a tight budget and mm -hmm. performing on the highest level. Mm -hmm. And Force India was the perfect company for that. Mm -hmm. So that and was always my, my, my favorite team and I was happy to get in there. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. And how was, how was the recruitment process? Was it long? Was it complicated? Tell us a little bit about, like without giving away maybe mm -hmm. certain information that might be confidential, of course, but could mm -hmm. you give us a, a little bit of a, of a hint on, on, on how it was? So the Force India one was was very uh, straightforward. So I just looked at their homepage. They advertised certain jobs. I applied for it. I got invited and then I got the offer. Um, but um, I, I know that it can be very different from team to team. Mm -hmm. But for the Force India one, it was very straightforward. And the, and the interviews, was it one or several interviews? That was only this one interview. And okay. in this one interview, they basically wanted to check my background. But to be honest, the requirements for this job as an aero designer uh, were not that high because you you don't need so much previous experience. You don't need ex uh, experience in aerodynamics or in designing because you will learn it there. I started as a junior design engineer, which means that you can be a graduate. Mm -hmm. And to properly learn this job of an aero designer, um, you can really just do it at a professional team. You can't learn this at university. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very specific now, like the, it's the, very specific, the yeah. certain um, like areas of the job that make it super specific to, to form yeah. one team, of course. So um, yeah. just the last question on the, on the recruitment process and the interview, was it with uh, one, one single person? And I presume that person was not from HR, was, was the hiring manager from the department? So in Force India at that time, the HR people would choose you and would send you the, uh, the invitation for the interview. But the interview itself will be done by the head of the department and by two senior designers. So you talk to three people. Okay. And how long did it last? Uh, it was around half an hour, 45 minutes. In total or, or for each person? In, in, in total. In total. Very good. Excellent. And and I experienced much longer interviews at different teams and also uh, multiple steps so that you get invited two or three times. Um, but at Force India, it was very short. Mm -hmm. That was, it was very, very simple. And um, the good thing is um, if you prepare something for the interview, if you, if you bring them something to talk about, then, then you can steer the, com the, the conversation, which is pretty good. So I had, um, like a, a like a whole folder with pictures of stuff that I did in the past. And then we had a lot of things to talk about and you can steer the conversation in your direction. And that's always an advantage. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're kind of catching them by surprise, right? So you're bringing your own, yeah. your own bunch of materials or previous yeah. work, so your portfolio to call it in a way. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and that's a way of impressing them and making sure that you um, are driving the conversation through proactivity rather than sitting there and waiting for, for questions to be asked. I think that's a very good approach. So you already said that you were hired as an aerodynamic design engineer. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about, about this role? Who, like, what, what does an aerodynamic design engineer do? Yeah, that was also my question before because I didn't know the job before I applied for it. I only knew aerodynamicists and aero performance engineers. So what is an aero designer? 
And um, in the end, the Aero Designer is, is the link between the aerodynamic development and, and the production and the workshop. So as an aero designer, you are shaping the car. You are designing every single aerodynamic part on the car, the whole bodywork, every little wing or vein. The aerodynamicist has the idea and does the development work and you are designing the parts. And it's a very interesting job because you can see your work later on the car. You can see it on TV. And like I said, it's, it's a job that you can only learn in a team. So it's nothing you can learn at university. So that's why the entry requirements are quite low. Mm -hmm. So um, I had colleagues from very different backgrounds and it was uh, a perfect job for me basically to get into that. Although I was um, experienced already with my previous, um, with the previous jobs that I've done, but I started basically from scratch at Force India. Mm -hmm. So then for what you're saying, the not having had Formula One experience before is not really a drawback, right? So anybody really who is an engineer, <clears throat> and not even being an engineer is a requirement uh, certain times. Um, yeah. If you have the right experience, um, yeah. then really this job can be fulfilled by, by anyone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I had, like I said, people with very different backgrounds, sometimes uh, technicians from the workshop, if they're very engaged, if they're very interested, they can develop into becoming an uh, aero designer. But you also have graduates, you have people with very different courses. So some people studied electrical engineering and then became an aero designer. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people were very much into aerodynamics and then became an aero designer. Like me, I was aerodynamicist before and then became aero designer which also helped me later on in the job because I had a good understanding of aerodynamics and could design parts that aerodynamically work. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a big advantage for me. And also I knew about cooling. So um, that also helped in different areas. And um, yeah, it was a very good experience. Mm -hmm. And what, what are the tools of an aerodynamics design engineer? So basically you have your design program. Most of the teams also in car industry, you use CATIA, but there are also other, other programs like SolidWorks and uh, Siemens and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, you don't have to be professional in that. Um, I had some CATIA knowledge, but no deep knowledge when I started this job. And I had a very intense CATIA course in, in the first weeks. And you learn as you do the job. So um, you will get professional during the job. Mm -hmm. And how, how did it feel um, working uh, in Formula One? Uh, I, I mean, it was kind of a passion that you had developed over the years and, and yeah. you were already working for a Formula One team at the time. Um, how was the experience? Did you feel that it was worth it? Yeah, definitely. Because the cool thing in Formula One is that every part is designed for a certain reason. So um, sometimes in, in, in road car engineering, there, there are parts that, that are just there and uh, not deeply developed. But in a Formula One car, everything is developed to the highest uh, degree. And it just makes sense to look into every single area because everything is interesting. And basically, my colleagues always said it's like a big candy shop. Mm -hmm. And there are so many interesting things to see um, from the um, development to the manufacturing, all the processes and the materials. And the good thing as an aero designer is that you're sitting in the middle of it. So you have access to all the aerodynamic uh, information and data. Uh, you can also see the CFD and um, at the same time you have as a designer access to all the design data so you can see exactly how the car is, is built up and um, what I was always doing was that for example in the evening after work I would stay a bit longer and just just look at the construction in certain areas mm -hmm. so just look at how the front axle is designed although this has nothing to do with my job description but I was interested in that how does the front suspension work or how does the engine look like where sits the turbocharger and how does the gearbox look like and things like this and all of that gave me a good understanding of how the car how the whole car works and that helped me again in my daily life because if I need to design something in a certain area I know what clearance I need for example or uh, what are the requirements in this area? Mm -hmm. Very interesting indeed. So then you finished you finished your your position with Force India. You said to leave mm -hmm. the team and you started your own company. Tell us a bit about the company. Like, what do you do? What are your services? So um, I decided to start my own company, and I 
basically consult people like I did previously in the VLN championship. So um, I'm working with different teams uh, that are struggling with aerodynamics or cooling and I can help them to make it work. Mm -hmm. And the other part of the, of the job is that I'm designing uh, customized aerodynamic parts. So if people need any kind of air intakes, air outlets, and they need this to be developed, so also with CFD development and so on, um, then I can design it for them and I can also produce it for them. And uh, I have customers all around the world, so from North America, Australia, all over Europe. And um, it's always very interesting to see what kind of projects they are working on. Mm -hmm. And like, who, who are the customers? Are they um, uh, individuals that have high performance cars and they want to tune them? Or are they racing cars or maybe both? Uh, it's, it's both. So it's people who want to customize their cars. Uh, most of the people are uh, smaller, low-budget racing teams mm -hmm. that need certain parts in certain area. They don't have the space to fit a standard part, so they need a specialized part. and um, Or they have a cooling issue and need an air intake in a very limited space, so I can design it for them. But it's not just about cars. I also sold uh, parts to people with a motorcycle racing team, or people are working on speedboats or... I had customers in Australia who were building their own aeroplanes and then they need certain air intakes and sent me the requirements and I can design the stuff for them. Excellent. So if there's anybody watching that is interested in the services that you provide, um, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, they can just check out my, my homepage, buckinmotorsport.com mm -hmm. and they find all the information there about myself and the company. Excellent. So hopefully that's going to help um, a number of people getting in touch with you. Um, yeah, thank you. So I think this sort of summarizes, it's been, I think it's been a very interesting conversation that summarizes your, your studies and your professional career to date. Um, now I would like to talk about your course. So you've launched a course in our platform at Motorsport mm -hmm. Engineer. Um, the course is about aerodynamics design engineering in Formula One. And having yes. just talked about your 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 experience in Formula One, there's no doubt that there's going to be a lot of exclusive knowledge being shared in the course. Um, mm -hmm. But maybe it would be great if we could hear from from yourself. Um, what's what's the course like? Um, who is it for? Yeah. So basically, it's to explain to people what is aero design in F1. What do you do as an aero designer? What is an aero designer? Um, what is the difference to an aerodynamicist to an aero performance engineer? and uh, to give some insight views into a Formula One team. So how's the team structured? What are the general processes? Where do you sit as an aero designer within the organization? And, um, but we will also go a little bit more into the specifics. So what are the specific problems of, of teams? What are the hidden facts that you want here in any magazine? And um, we will also look into how to design parts, how to design complex parts. How would you efficiently design them so you can save a lot of time we will look into materials and production methods and we will also look at um, the area um, how can you develop your own career starting as a junior aero design uh, engineer because um, you start at a very good place and you have a lot of different uh, opportunities to develop mm -hmm. who would you think is the like the the sort of student that would um, benefit the most out of this course or in an, in another kind of way of asking this question um, who would this course be ideal for so it would be ideal for students who are studying something technical and wonder how to get into formula one that is the, the classic candidate but also for people who are working as engineers in different categories and want to get into formula one so people who are working in aerospace and automotive or at suppliers and uh, if they want to get into formula one or just people who are interested in um, how a formula one team is working what happens behind the scenes and um, what are the processes and the structures behind the mm -hmm. formula one team excellent um would you say that there are any entry requirements for the course any previous knowledge that people have to have before enrolling into it I wouldn't say so because um, you can just be a Formula One fan and it would still be very interesting for you. But um, if you already have some design experience, you would benefit more from it because we, we show um, how to design some complex stuff. And I wouldn't say you, you need much previous knowledge. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. we, we're running out of time. It's been a very interesting conversation that we've had here, but I wouldn't want to finish this without asking you two important questions. 
the first one is if you were to think about one single factor or like one single action that you took in in like your early days uh, as a youngster that helped you achieve everything you've achieved that helped you get to where you are today what would you say it was i think the main factor is that i always did more than what was required so during school time i was working in the uh, in, on my holidays and while i was studying i also did additional qualifications so always stay curious and do as much as possible use every opportunity to learn more because it will help you in the long run mm -hmm. and um, the second question is um, maybe maybe could you give some advice to students and young professionals who um, are interested in following your footsteps that are really keen on getting into formula one or into like the top level of the motorsports industry um, and they might be struggling or might not be kind of uh, very sure on, on how to achieve this. What could you say to them with all the experience that you've gained over the years and all the people that you've met over this time and also factoring, factoring in the pandemic that we're experiencing? One factor is, is obviously, again, that stay curious, try to learn as much as possible because it will help you later. Um, the more experience you had from a previous job, it will help you in your future job. And one little strategy that I always had was that whenever I came into a new department or a new company, I always looked out for the job that no one wants to do. So there's always a job that some PowerPoint or some construction that no one likes to do, and then just jump on it, do it, make it your own little project, become professional in that, and then people will come to you and ask you to do it and stuff. So as a youngster, you're, you're never sitting around doing nothing. You always have something to do and um, you can create your own name quicker mm -hmm. that way and um, just set yourself high goals and uh, work as much as you can towards it. Very good. Well, Martin, thank you very much for your time. Um, it's been a very interesting conversation that we've had with you. There's Thank you. Uh, no doubt that you will inspire a lot of people who will be watching this video and help, help them a lot as well. Um, so yeah, once again, thanks very much for being with us. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. Um, so this is the end of this video. Uh, we really hope that you've enjoyed it. If you want to uh, see more courses that we've got available in our platform, remember to check it out on our website, which is motorsportengineer.net you'll find several more courses from professionals in uh, the fields of Formula One, Formula Three, and so on, all, all sorts of motorsport engineering categories. Um, but until then, uh, until we see you next time, stay healthy and goodbye.